What? I don't think it works from in here. Okay. In the other room. Wait till Dennis tells you to go. We're waiting for you, Dennis. Just let us know. Yeah, last night we had a meeting with a group of people, and um, one of the one of the chapters was from Poland, and they wanted to know what what to do, what the next step is. So Jacques wanted to address that specifically for them, but they're not here right now. But it's for everybody, of course. <coughs> you might have to come up closer because Jacques' voice isn't real loud. press time, I can't go into all the details, but I'm going to tell you what you have to do if you want to see the Venus Project come about. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. And this is what you have to do. There's millions of people that are very religious. You have to package a presentation for them, and that is that most of the churches have sold out to the money system throughout the world. And those Christians that really believe in setting up a world which is a brotherhood of humanity, you have to get them to join the new, don't call it a Christian movement, the new movement to, to carry out the teachings of all religions. But don't use any name, Catholicism or Hamilton. Don't use any names. But you have to prepare a package for people to get them to form in the Zeitgeist movement for carrying out true religious teachings, not go to church and, and sing all day long, do things. Jesus said, by their work you shall know them. So all they talk about has no meaning at all, especially when Americans say, God bless America. You know, who the hell are you to tell God who to bless? All right, so the next thing that has to be done is you have to go into detail. We have to collect sufficient funds from corporations this is strange. So I'd like a young couple to go around the different corporations and say, if you don't say this, 50 million people in the world now know about the Venus Project. But there are only so many hundreds of thousands that are doing things now. So if you have any vision for improving your country, this is what you have to do. Go around to organizations and say, this is the future trend. And uh, what the trend is, is to collect sufficient funds to build the first city here in this land. The first city will consist of engineers and planners who plan the detail of the city. I will give them the details, if they make contact with me, of how to build the city. What, what has to be done? You can go to concrete companies. You can go around and ask them to donate steel, whatever we need. Ask them for it. Say, if you want a future, this is the future. Otherwise, things are going to get worse. They're going to go downhill, and there'll be no future. This is what you have to tell businessmen, that the Venus Project does not want to destroy the free enterprise system. It wants to lift everybody up, so the richest person today will be considered poor in the Venus Project. Because the Venus Project has all kinds of medical research and heart disease, cystic fibrosis, all the diseases. No more digging up nickels and dimes. In a resource-based economy, do we have the resources to do this? We have more than enough resources. For education, due to the fact that parents are very slow, and parents don't know how to raise children, they really don't. They do it on a feeling basis. And if you really want your kids to be highly productive and intelligent, we can't take the children away from the parents. But we could do this have the parents send their kids to our summer camp. And at summer camp, we teach the kids all kinds of new things, including how their parents got to be the way they are. 
why they say, don't you play with that Catholic girl. You're a Lutheran. You don't play with that Seventh-day Adventist. You hurt people when you do that. You separate people. So we can't do that in front of the parents. They won't understand that. But while we're working on the kids, we make soap operas for television. Standard-looking soap operas. And the kids say in the soap opera, or say as 20-year-old girl says, Daddy, I want to become a social anthropologist. He says, what's that? Then it shows what it is. So every soap opera will be designed to turn people around. So you just don't watch Helen Trent's Troubles. All you see on soap opera is the same old story with different actors. And they always say they're having an affair. They can't even say they're having sex. You know what I mean, having an affair. I've been to a thousand restrooms and never found a place to rest. Think about it. So the world you live in has a language that was designed hundreds, hundreds of years ago, which makes it impossible to talk to each other. So what we have to do is get people together to go to corporations and try to get funding for building a new city. They say, what's a city for? This city is for sustainability. Have photoelectric cells so the whole city is self-contained. Remember this, the electric companies won't like it. Because if you generate your own power and maintain your own city, a lot of people are going to dislike it. So you tell the electric companies, if the millions of people are out of work, they can't afford electric light anyway. So you're going to have problems ahead. This is why we're doing it, to develop proof of a sustainable city. Now, naturally, if we build a city and there are certain things that don't work too well, we'll change them right then and there. Because this is how you learn. I think I told some of you in the past that sincere people believe man can fly and they build small wings. And they, the guy jumped off the Eiffel Tower and he died. And his brother wrote, make wings larger next time. That's how you get experience. Everybody makes mistakes or nobody makes any mistakes. The first guy that flew with nitroglycerin, nitric acid and glycerin, the building disappeared, so did the guy. His cousin wrote, never fool with that stuff. So there's only one way to learn, and that's no one makes mistakes. They try whatever they know. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. They invented the word mistake, which is untrue. Because there's no such thing as good or bad people. If you were raised by the headhunters, you'd hunt heads. If you were raised as an Eskimo, and never saw anything else, you'd be an Eskimo. If I said to you, you can have anything you want, what do you want? He doesn't say a stainless steel pool table. He can't even think of that if he's an Eskimo. So people, this is a hard thing to say, if you ask people what they want, they really don't know. Now they think they want a job to earn enough money to pay for a house and a car. What they want is a house and a car. They don't want a job. So people don't even know how to come to the point what is it that you want? You want to be free to study whatever you want to study in any university without owing $40,000 when you get out. The better educated all people are all over the world, the richer the whole world. Every kid deprived of a college education or information is going to hurt you. Every kid shooting up drugs you're going to pay for later on. So I notice that a lot of high school kids and college kids hang out in malls. I am not like the United States. There should be art centers, music centers, cultural centers for kids to go to, not hang out in Coca-Cola stands or in restaurants. So we are abusing millions of people that way. And we would take all the soldiers and teach them how to become problem solvers, send them to school so they can bridge the difference between nations rather than kill. Now, I said before, we don't go to another country to bring democracy. We go because they have oil, or they have some resources we need, or cheap labor. And the reason people hate other people is when the Irish came to this country, they worked for half price. So I said, get rid of the goddamn Irish. And when the Chinese came to this country, they worked for very little. Get rid of the goddamn Chinese. There's nothing the matter with anybody. They come, they want to live. All people need clean air, clean water, good food, and a relevant education. They all need the same thing. But if you've got one country that controls most of the Earth's resources, you will always have war, always have territorial disputes, until the world joins together. When they join together, we go off into space. 
I'm afraid of any one nation going out into space. Because if that happens, you'll see nuclear weapons going on out there. Space will become the next battlefield. People today, I'm talking about the top people that run your country, are too stupid to understand the wonders of technology, what it can do for people. We can solve any problem. Proof, you got a bunch of scientists to make nuclear bombs. We never had nuclear bombs. You get a bunch of scientists, they design airplanes and bombers. We don't want them doing that. We want them working out safer highways, safer cars that can't hit each other. We want them improving the agricultural yield. This is what has to be done. People ask me, what do you do? This is what has to be done. You have to go to lumber yards and say, would you donate lumber to the first Venus Park City? You have to do that with all industry. You have to say, 50 million people now know about it, otherwise they do nothing. If they see, gee, our future doesn't look too good, they'll move in that direction. Because in America, Chevrolet, General Motors, and the banks failed. So we bailed them out with public funds used for, for, for better education for kids, feeding the poor. They gave that money to the banks, and the banks gave it to their friends. So you know who really runs the country. They took all these public funds, so, and they give it to the people that created the problem in the first place. All politics all over the world is corrupt. Does anybody doesn't understand that? Yeah. If you've got a money system, and you own a big factory, and you produce more goods than he can, you're producing the same product, but if you tell him how you do it, you'll lose the competitive edge. That's called the, the deliberate withdrawal of efficiency. So if you own patents, a lot of people in the world can't make your thing. So we're interested in the world, we're interested in bettering everybody. So every human being is well cared for medically. You don't have to write your congressman for women's rights. Today they tell you, write your congressman. Well, if he's so dumb, you have to write him. Think of modern technology. When you fly on an airplane today, commercial airliner, you don't have to write the pilot, say you've been flying at an angle for three hours, straighten up. He knows his business. The people in Washington should understand women's problems, agricultural problems, educational problems. All those jerks up there today called politicians know nothing. Don't take my word for it. Ask them. Go up and say, how would you prevent forest fires? I don't know. How would you prevent automobile fires? I don't know. They don't know anything. I'm trying to tell you that. Don't take my word. Ask them. They were great a hundred years ago, but we didn't need them. Today, everything is technical. Everything that you have, your washing machine, your television set, your electric lights, your automobile, everything is technical. So politicians are not technical. Therefore, they cannot supply those needs. But if you got a bunch of engineers together and say, we would like you to design highways across this nation, uh, no senator like they asked me, can you make a highway go a little bit north for about 20 miles and then turn? And I said, why? Because I own 1,000 acres up that way. If the highway goes that way, the land value goes up. You understand, you can't be decent in a monetary system. If your bottom line is profit and you hire people and they make five bucks and 60 cents an hour, if you give them 10 bucks an hour, no one will invest in your company because they want to see the profit margin going up. So we are in a society that makes us cruel, unkind, but we go to church on Sunday and say, dear God, do this or do that, or God bless America. So here we are telling God who to bless, which is an insult to all religions. If you feel God made everything in the universe, he's ultra smart, you don't have to tell him your aunt Minnie is sick. Ease the pain, please. He's, oh, gee, thanks for telling me that. <laughs> you see, we make God as dumb as we are. So all religions are crap today. They don't even understand what they read. Or take the Lord's Prayer. It says, love thine enemy. Well, if you love your enemy, how the hell can you go to war? It says, judge not, lest you be judged. Don't do jury duty. Because you don't know the conditions that made that person choke the next person. You understand what I mean? There was a little guy in New York, he worked for the police department. And one day, uh, he cut his wife's head off and put it in the box. And it took years to catch up with that guy. 
And when they caught up with them, they killed them, of course, the electric chair. Now, here's what the guy had to say. He, he was very short, and the wife that married him just married him for money. And she called him Runt, you little nothing, continuously, for years. And he didn't kill her. But if you can see his side of the story, say, gee, he's a hell of a nice guy. Go through all that shit before he killed her. So you don't know why people do things. Leave it alone. Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. And don't judge other people or anything. Because we don't know what made them that way. Now, don't take my word. If you're religious, in the Bible it says, judge not, lest you be judged. That means you have no right to judge anyone. And then there are judges and juries, Supreme Court judge. They're all full of shit, what I'm trying to tell you. They are in violation of everything religious. Now, Jesus chased the money changers out of the temple. Now they're all back in there. Every church is a money thing. We need money for Jesus. Jesus doesn't need any money. God doesn't need any money. He doesn't need your five bucks. What do you think God is? Well, God is an excuse, man-made, to try to understand where all this came from. So I suggest that religious people become honest. When you say, where did all this come from? I don't know. I really don't. Did Jesus work miracles? It said so in a book. I don't know. You really don't know that. So to prove that Jesus was not very bright, he said, God knows everything is what you're taught in church. He made every galaxy, every bug, everything. You don't have to tell them, God forgive them for they know not what they do. God said, gee, I didn't know that. So, so you make God dumb. Then if you don't follow the true teachings, you burn eternally. Now that sounds more like a psychopath that would burn people eternally. So I'm telling you, religion has gone off on a sick track. Now if you're religious, you want to discuss that later on, I will. But I'm trying to tell you, if you want a better world, you have to get up off your ass and make it better. Otherwise, nothing will happen. If you just keep it as a hobby, if you don't say anything, don't talk to people. So I'm telling you, women and men and children are abused in all societies. And I told some of you that I went to the South Pacific Islands years ago when I was 21, and everybody walked around nude. And I never saw a guy look at a girl's body, only the eyes. If you're swimming nude ever since you're that big, you know, you don't look at a person's body. There were no peeping toms. If everybody walked around nude, nobody's going to peep in your window and look at you dressing. And there were no fetishes. That means tit men, leg men, ass men, hair men. Men go for different parts of the body. Because in Hollywood, when the girl leans forward, the camera moves in on the cleavage line. When she's walking, it's on her butt. That's why men get A, hey, get a load of that. That isn't the way men are. That's the way they're made in this society. So if you feel sorry for men, it's okay. They're made that way. But that isn't the nature of men. In the islands, you couldn't give away a magazine on nude women. You say, what the hell's that? You understand? <laughs> it would have no meaning. So all you people think that I guess that's human nature. It isn't. All our values, everything we believe in. Good morning, how are you if you're in the army? And if you're Irish, you see a fine Irish lad sitting there. Or if you live in Australia, you say, how are you, mate? Because even your language, your facial expressions reflect your culture. If you lived in Germany 10 years, then you move to France and live there 10 years, you'll speak with a German-French accent. Do you understand that? Okay. So whenever people say, well, I'm, I make my own decisions, you don't make your own decisions. Because the movies, magazines tell you what kind of furniture you want, what kind of refrigerator to buy, what kind of drink, Coca-Cola, whatever the hell it is. So all your decisions are forced by advertising on TV. There'll be no advertising in the future, only information on your TV. Then there are so-called good people we don't want to cut down the forest. There's a forest we need for oxygen. So they walk with signs, please don't cut down the forest. And then there are other people that go to Home Depot and they buy lumber. As long as they buy lumber, they'll cut down the forest. So you're walking with signs, women's rights, men don't give a damn about that, that's your problem. So everybody is selfish, interested in their own works. What's in it for me? And all countries are that way. US, 
goes to other countries because of cheap labor, oil, or something they want. They don't go to bring humanity to a country. And a preacher goes to another country to see if he can get more Catholics or more Presbyterians to donate more to the church. So the Catholic Church says, have as many children as you want, the Lord will provide. And I say to them, are you sure the Lord will provide? I know it. Then sign here. If he doesn't, you will provide. No, they never sign. You understand? If you really believe in something, back it up. Okay? So the Venus Project, to me, will enlighten all people. No matter what you are, Italian, Greek, you all need the same thing. Clean air, clean water, decent home, medical care, and a relevant education. A relevant education means no lawyers, no businessmen, no investment bankers, no one that's parasitic. Parasitic means that does nothing to make the world a better place. When everybody is educated to improve agriculture, language, communication, that's wonderful. So everybody you meet will be your friend in the future. Today, you meet a person, I got just the car you're looking for. I got just the house you're looking for. We're all salespeople. Everybody makes a buck on human misery. If you can't see too well, somebody sells your eyeglasses. You know what I mean? If you got a dental infection, some dentist makes a thousand four hundred bucks on a root canal. So misery supports a lot of the culture. Our job is to build research labs and give them whatever the hell they need. No more digging up dimes and nickels for heart disease, cancer. We give the lab whatever the hell they need, and no more money appealing going out to Hollywood to try to get a job as an actress, then the producer pinches your ass, and if you let him do that, you might get a job in the next picture. If you go to bed with him, you'll surely get a job in the next picture. We don't want any of that crap anymore. And you can't make laws say, say no to drugs. As long as you make money selling drugs, no one's going to say no to drugs. Don't you see? Sometimes if you're a dishwasher and you earn minimum wage, minimum wage and people bring more dishes in than you can imagine every day. Somebody says, you'll never get out of that. Why don't you sell drugs? You could make a thousand bucks a week. He said, but I'll be poisoning people. They don't give a shit about you. What do you care about them for? So I said, okay, I'll try it. So what is a criminal? To me, a judge, a lawyer, criminal. They can take words, turn them around, make you look bad or good, depending on how much you pay them. So, I can't stand lawyers, judges, politicians. They would all be considered criminal. If you don't understand me, King Solomon had a thousand wives. Today he'd be arrested as a bigamist. But everybody admires King Solomon. And they all admire Jesus Christ, but they don't know that Jesus Christ went just before they crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them. He insulted God. Now then he also said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? That means, why don't you do something about this horrible situation? Nobody seems to understand that. They read their Bible, and they don't know what the hell they're reading about. They really don't. I've never met a priest that understood religion, that was kind and good and forgiving. And if a guy punched me, he turned the other cheek. I never met a Christian. Would you believe that? I heard about them. I've never seen any. I've never been in a church where they personified the teachings of Christ or Mohammed, or any other church. Now, a lot of Arabs believe that the Arabs need ten wives, because man is always looking. Well, in their world, where everybody is covered up, you know, if you're walking down the street with your wife, you could be walking down the street with somebody else. So the whole thing is insane. We want to educate people to restore nature. Don't dump toxic materials in the rivers. So, you don't have to tell people that if you have science and technology who that maintain the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. So what I'm saying is use religion. It's a big thing, but get the people to come in to the Venus Project, because we do what religion talks about. We don't have any paper proclamations, equal rights to all people. That's bullshit. George Washington, the President of the United States, the first president, had 300 slaves. Did you know that? He'd be a bum and arrested today. So all the people you're taught to admire, the rich, the wealthy, and the powerful, you don't even know who improved agriculture for you. His name isn't anywhere. 
You go into a park today, there are cannons, war tanks, all the wrong things. There, there should be statues of people that made the world a better place. You understand what I'm saying? That's what has to be done. I don't think I have more time. Yeah, no, I can't go into more detail. I don't have the time. Is there any other procedural things you want to give me to do? Or no? Organize to do what I said. Go to different corporations and tell them there are 50 million people that now know about the Venus Project. Will you make a contribution to the uh, Shy Guys movement here and get that information out of all the other Shy Guys people? Don't hope that you can do it alone. They will do it if they fear that their system will not last forever. There is no way you can design a city and say, this is the best city. It's the best you know of up to now. The kids of the future will design their own cities. So the city I design is not utopia. People say, well, Fresco is a utopian. He thinks there are final frontiers. He doesn't. Any city I design is best I know how with what I know up to now. But 10 years from now, the kids will be different. So no one can design the best laptop. You can do the best laptop you know how to do up to now. But 10 years from now, be smaller, lighter, take pictures of your rollers, send you all kinds of information. So don't ever think that there are final frontiers. There are none. Man will keep inventing and changing, inventing and changing, so the distant future, people may live to be 200 years old or more. So there's no limit to what man can do. And if you take them off, destructive weapons. That's about it. Thank you.